Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Inside of today's video, it is finally a tier list time. So we've had a few weeks now to dive into the meta. We're going to be looking at all 67 brawlers in the game right now. And also in prediction on the brand new brawler, Hank, which I think is coming later in the month. Not too sure on that one, but giving you guys uh, the full competitive tier list from all the way from the F tier all the way up into the S tiers. So before we jump into things there, make sure you're using the credit code. That'd be greatly appreciated. And without further ado, let's jump into the tier list. All right, guys, so starting off with the F tier, starting off with the worst brawler in the game right now, we have Ego. So Ego recently received a small 300 HP buff. This helped him a little bit, but still he's one of the worst brawlers in the game just because in 3v3 mode, especially when you're up against skilled players, they just group up and counter Ego so easily. But in solo showdown, he's definitely seen a lot more love specifically to counter really meta brawlers there like Meg, but still in 3v3 modes, he's pretty bad. Next up in the F tier, we have Frank. So Frank is just such an easy brawler to counter. There's so many supers, star powers, gadgets, all of that stuff just cancel his super. And most of the time, He's only really there to feed the enemy supers, so he's just a walking super machine. He sometimes get value in Brawl Ball, but more often than not, he will get countered. Next up in the F tier, we have Gale. So Gale is a brawler that got heavily nerfed a few months ago, and ever since, he's really struggled because Gale predominantly is a counter to a lot of tanks. It just takes him so long to build up his super. He's actually really strong in a brand new game mode, Volley Brawl, but other than that, it's just a lot of brawlers that just serve his purpose a lot better, so he's very weak in this meta. Next up in the F tier, we have Chester. So Chester has really fallen off in the meta ever since he received that damage nerf and ever since there's just been so many better lanes than him A lot of the time he's just gonna lack the damage because a lot of times he only really of course deals damage when he gets to the third or fourth sequence of his main attack uh, But he's sometimes good in brew ball uh, But other than that I'd rather just go other lanes that can just destroy him easily next up in the F tier We have Mortis so even though he's one of the most played brawlers in the game He's actually one of the worst brawlers inside of the game his win rates are terrible and when it comes down to just playing him in general there's just so many brawlers in the game right now there's so many gadgets supers all of that stuff that just counter him way too hard and specifically in uh, competitive play there's a lot of meta brawlers as well like otis and rt that can just shut down mortis so easily so only on the very rare occurrence that you'll see a mortis and it's normally when it's like a last pick and you're facing off against like three brawlers that he can hard counter and lastly in the f tier we have tara so tara has just been terrible in the meta for such a long time another brawler which is pop pretty popular when it comes down to just playing ladder but she really suffers in competitive. I don't remember the last time I've seen her play. It's because she just really lacks the damage in a 1v1 interaction. Just so many brawlers, even the brawlers you'd think she would hard counter, can just beat in the lane because she doesn't have that damage output. Okay, so now moving on to the D tier. So these are brawlers that are pretty bad in the meta, but they might have the rare occurrence where they can counter specific meta brawlers. So starting off with Mr. P. So Mr. P, even with a brand new pet gear, he hasn't really received any type of buff just because the portals don't really get additional damage with our pet gear. Normally, it's just used to waste the opponent's ammo. But yeah, Mr. P's only really used to counter some specific sharpshooters like B or Jean, for example. Other than that, he just gets turned over so easy. Next up in the D tier, we have Jesse. So Jesse, another brawler which really lacks the damage right now, lacks the range as well, and is only really usable in certain hot zone maps like parallel plays. And she's just outclassed so easily right now. Next up in the D tier, we have Bull. So Bull is only really strong in heist. The main reason why he's so weak is because his super is just so predictable. Once you run out of your stomper gadgets, the enemy just know where you're going every single time. So for me, Bull has to be one of the worst brawlers in the game. Next up in the D tier, here we have Colt. So unbreakable walls really hurt Colt in this meta. Main reason why you'd pick Colt normally is to break open walls or specifically in heights to get a lot of damage. And you know, some maps like safe zone, you could use the gadget to then make it a lot easier to break out of spawn. But now with unbreakable walls and just so many heist maps basically indirectly nerfing Colt a lot. So he's only really good on a select few heist maps. Next up in the detail, we have Jackie. So Jackie is a brother which just like Colt has been indirectly nerfed because a lot of the good unbreakable wall maps have been removed so hence she's just gone down a lot more in the rankings and also she just really lacks the range right now and any good player can just keep distance with her pretty easily next up in the detail we have buster so buster is a pretty underrated brawler sometimes is a rare occurrence where he might be quite strong but the only strong thing about him really is his gadget the ability to push people towards you and take them down pretty quickly there's a few rare scenarios where it might be good on like canal grande for example but other than that his super is just terrible and he's so predictable and lastly in the d tier we have a rosa so i just feel like rosa is a little bit too predictable in this meta there's a few certain maps where she can really pop off 
like Gem Fort, for example, or certain Brubble maps. But overall, just, just a lot of different tanks that would just overwhelm her. So now we're moving on to the C tier, starting off with Willow. So Willow, pretty much a brand new brawler within the game. I think she's really inconsistent because the super is actually really hard to hit and it only lasts a few seconds. So it's actually pretty hard to get value uh, with it outside of Brubble. Of course, you can uh, make the opponent own score in Brubble, which is only really used in field goal and competitive and also parallel plays in the hot zone. Other than that, she's just outclassed by all the other throwers. Next up in the C tier, we have a Leon. So Leon's a really underrated brawler, although he gets countered pretty hard by the vision gear. I still feel like there's quite a few ways you can use him in pretty much every single game mode. So I think he's pretty decent across the Board. Next up in the C tier, we have Bo. So Bo has really gone down in the meta ever since they reworked his totem gadget. It's actually made him a lot less viable, especially in game modes like Knockout. And then also the pairing with Grey, it's just, it's hurt him quite a fair bit. But also, not only that, it's he's just way too predictable right now. And unless you're playing at low levels, his mines are just so easy to avoid. He's only really strong on Hot Zone and a few other areas. Next up in the C tier, we have BB. So she's just mediocre across the board, really. She's fairly decent in Brew and heist where she can get a lot of damage with her super but other than that more often than not she'll get countered so easy so next up in the c tier we have mandy so mandy is a brother which you can only use in knockout and bounty because of her long range but even when it comes down to competitive she's hardly ever seen so basically on competitive you could actually put her in the d tier but because of the way i kind of play her especially on ladder with her super she has a potential to be an incredibly dangerous role if you hit that super but it's really high risk high reward next up in the c tier we have a nanny so nanny is very rarely used in a lot of game modes but when it comes down to bounty and knockout in particular she's a fantastic brawler a lot of times her super will one shot brawlers but not only that she's a really great counter to those other sharpshooters you see in bounty you know like piper for example so she can be pretty dangerous in the right hands next up in the c tier we have 8 bits who's only really competitively used in heist because of the amount of damage you can get onto the high safe and then sometimes in gem grab as a gem carrier but overall you know, Abit's pretty slow and pretty easy to find counters to him. Next up in the C tier, we have Griff. So Griff is a brawler which has been falling off quite a fair bit within the meta. He used to be like an S tier brawler like some months ago. But ever since they actually nerfed his supercharge rate, it significantly impacted him in the meta. And specifically as well, Unbreakable Walls. Normally with Griff, you could just use your piggy bank and open up any wall you wanted to. Now, there's only a few maps where you get value out of that gadget. And as I mentioned, in those 1v1s before, you could just charge your super back so quickly in a 1v1 and just shred people. Now, you can't do that. So, that's why I think Griff has definitely fallen off. Next up in the C tier, we have Sandy. So, Sandy is another underrated brawler within the meta. Not often really picked in competitive in Brawl and Gem Grab. But in a few rare scenarios, I've actually seen Sandy work out really well because there's been a couple of good buffs to Sandy recently. And I just feel like as time goes on, I think Sandy actually might improve in the rankings so next up in the c tier we have rico so i think with unbreakable walls it received a little bit of a buff but as time has gone on and a lot of those maps have actually been removed i think rico is slowly going down again he's just really predictable there's so many aggro assassins right now that can just destroy him because he has no real defensive capabilities especially with those stun assassins like buzz for example and even on some of the maps where he used to dominate like hard rock mine for example isn't even being drafted in some competitive regions so there's only a couple of maps in the game right now where he's strong in like hot potato but for me he's just way too predictable and so easy to count on so next up in this c tier we have el primo so el primo in the last meta was actually really strong especially in rubble i had a lot of fun using him but i think as time has gone on People are just using tanks a little bit less because there's just so many heavy tank counters out there. So Primo's dominance has, of course, fallen as well because normally you use Primo as a brawler to counter his fellow tanks. But he's still a pretty fairly decent pick when it comes down to heist or brawl. But he's just slowly going back to his old ways. So next up in the C tier, we have Fang. So Fang can be a pretty underrated brawler and people tend to forget about him. But he has a really good super, which, of course, can counter a lot of those sharpshooters. And he's seen quite often in Bounty and Knockout, normally towards the end of the draft. But other than that, he's pretty weak and really easy to feed super from. Next up in the C tier, we have Sam. So I might be a little bit harsh on Sam. He could probably be in the B tier, but I just think myself, he's just so predictable in this meta. There's just so many brawlers that can counter him. He's pretty good on some maps in Brubble or maps with a lot of walls. But more often than not, if you get a couple of people pinching him, 
is just going to be a big super feed. Next up in the C tier, we have Squeak. So Squeak, when he has his gadgets, is really strong. But when he runs out of those residue gadgets, it becomes really easy to counter. So you got to make sure you're using Squeak in a specific map where you know you're going to get a lot of value out of him. But other than that, there's just so many aggro picks that can overrun him. So next up in the C tier, we have Brock. So Brock can be a fantastic pick still in the heist right now. But there's not really many other situations where he's strong. He's good in out in the open, but some other knockout maps or bounty maps, he's just really kind of fallen off. Other brawlers can just counter him so much. And especially with throwers, throwers counter Brock way too easily right now. With a couple of shots, they can take him down. Unbreakable walls, of course, hurting him as well. Because a lot of times, you could just use his gadget to break open walls. But now you can't really do that. So I think Brock is more in a niche situation where he's used on a few highest maps. So next up in the C tier, we have a Piper. So Piper has drastically fallen off recently. Mainly because there's just other sharpshooters in the game that just have such a better kit than her. You know, like RT, for example, has the range of Piper. But then he can also defend himself a lot better if they're like an assassin and it comes into play. But Piper is one of those brawlers where people tend to ego pick her a lot and if you're missing a few shots people can just punish you so easily but she's still somewhat usable on some long range bounty maps and knockout but outside of that I rarely see any success with her. So next up in the C tier, we have Byron. So Byron is actually incredibly underrated. I think you could actually argue that he's a little bit higher, but people still underrate him a little bit. He's a really fantastic option in bounty, knockout. Also, and you can get a lot of synergy with a lot of brawlers that like to get percentage on the zone. And just overall, he can just be that passive brawler healing people up from a distance. I think the buff recently to him definitely helped him a lot. And lastly, in the C tier, we have Pam. So some people think that Pam is a much stronger brawler right now. I think that might be a little bit of an over-exaggeration because she was somewhat near the D tier in the last meta, but I think she's underappreciated a lot of the time. It's like one of those things when people use Pam again and realize, oh wait, she's actually pretty good because she's really good with the vision gear. She's got a really good gadget that can counter assassin brawlers. And I'm talking just any map with a lot of grass, you're gonna get such insane value like Gem Fort, for example, or even like maps like uh, Kaboom Canyon where you can just scout the grass so easily. So Pam is in that scenario where she's always underappreciated. Okay, so now moving on to the B tier brawlers, starting off with Bali. So Bali is a pretty underappreciated brawler right, right now within the meta. He's actually pretty consistent across the board. I've seen him used in some maps like Dry Season and Bounty because a lot of other throws get banned. So he can be still a really good thrower to counter certain brawlers he's also just used some really good uh unbreakable wall maps you know like field goal for example he's really dominant because he can counter tanks with a slow gadget and then of course counter those squishier brawlers because he's a thrower but throws are pretty dominant in his meta you know hot potato as well so i think bolly is secretly pretty strong right now next up in the b tier we have sprout so if we're talking strictly power league sprout is a fantastic option in bounty knockout he can be so dominant in ladder, it's a little bit harder to play him, especially in Brawl Ball, but overall, I think he's a really solid option right now. Next up in the B tier, we have Daryl. So another brawler which is always underappreciated, but whenever I see people draft him, it actually works out more often than not. He can be that assassin brawler, which is really tanky once he finishes his role, and people always underrate it. So I'm talking in some scenarios in Knockout, I've seen him used in Gold on Gulch quite a fair bit. Really strong in Brawl Ball, really strong in Heist, and just decent across the board. So it can always be that forgotten brawler who can hold counter a lot of different options so next up in the b tier i've gone with hank so hank is a brawler which isn't even in the game right now but i think it'd be fairly decent my biggest worry with hank though is his super i feel like it actually won't get too much value it looks pretty terrible to me but the fact that you can shoot around walls with his main attack can deal a lot of damage and having 9000 hp i think it'll be a fairly decent brawler within the meta but next up in the b tier we have Maisie. so it's pretty hard to gauge how strong she really is because a lot of people still don't actually have her unlocked but after trying her out in brubble specifically i think she's so so strong in brubble but Elsewhere, I feel like other brawlers outrange her a little bit too easily, and her main attack can sometimes be too hard to hit, specifically up close or when you want to wall peek. But the really strong thing about her is definitely her supercharging it with just three hits. You can cycle so easily, pair that with a slow with a star power, and I actually think she could be secretly strong. So next up in the B tier, we have Lolo. So Lolo's always that really consistent brawler. When you're unsure who on who to go on a pretty like open map, 
you can just go Lola because she's got a really strong super which of course like doubles her damage and it's pretty hard when you're under fire against a Lola. She's really consistent in highest hot zone and just across the board can always be that good hybrid brawler. So next up in the B tier we have a Buzz. So I'm always reluctant to put Buzz somewhat high but a good Buzz player can absolutely pop off. Me myself I'm terrible on Buzz so I'd actually put him towards the C tier but in the right setting he can absolutely pop off. He's pretty decent in bounty pretty decent in any game mode really as long as you're up against the right matchup he can absolutely carry next up in the b tier we have m so whenever i'm talking about draft it's always good to have that brother which is good against so many different options and m's always fulfills that role especially in rubble or gem grab she's a brawler that can shut down so many tanks but still be decent against other brawlers as long as she's got the speed gear to hand but yeah she's pretty dangerous across the board so next up in the b tier we have dynamite so dynamite is actually the most annoying brawler in the meta right now for me because a good dynamite player especially on brubble will make your game hell because of how strong he is right now especially with the gadget it's just really hard to pinch out a good dynamite so more often than not, you'll need like some type of aggro brawler to actually counter him when you're playing a map like field goal or else he's literally going to 1v3 you. He's also a lot more viable now and got some good heist maps like Hot Potato and Pit Stop. So next up in the B tier, we have Anita. So Anita's a fairly consistent brawler. She kind of reminds me like M's because she's that brawler that fulfills the hybrid role. She's really good against tanks, but then also good against your generic lanes as well. She's used very often in gem grab and brubble and also those really close off heist maps like Hot potato so next up in the b tier we have colette so you could actually put colette a little bit higher because she counters so many of the meta brawlers but i think b tier is pretty fair for her she's a really strong brawler in heist and she's just decent across the board in all the other game modes the main reason you see her though is because she counters so many of the top brawlers brawlers like cole bonnie any high hp brawler you know rt she's actually one of the best counters to make as well which is pretty much the best brawler in the game so that is why colette has hence got a lot better. So next up in the B tier, we have Tick. So if you watch my Power League guide video, you realize that especially in Knockout and Bounty, Tick is always a really safe first pick. You know, he's pretty decent against all the other throwers, but not only that, he's actually secretly okay against Assassins as long as he's got his super or any gadgets left. So it's just always a good safe first pick. Uh, but in all the other game modes, he's pretty useless. But because of how strong he is in Bounty and Knockout, he has to be in the B tier. So next up in the B tier, we have a Bell. So Bell is super consistent across the board. If you're ever unsure on who to go on a fairly long range map, Bell is a really safe bet. She's really strong in Bounty right now, especially on some maps, because you can just put your nest egg in a good situation and just confirm a kill quite easily. She's really consistent on a lot of heist maps as well. We're talking like Kaboom Canyon. I always seem to pick her because if you shoot a shot onto the safe, it's just going to ricochet onto the opponents. But across the board, as long as it's run a long range, you can never go wrong with Belle. And lastly, in the B tier, we have Shelly. So I actually wanted to put Shelly in the A tier, but I feel like people are just scared to pick Shelly as much as possible but whenever i have shelly on my team in power league they seem to do so well she's so strong right now they increased her movement speed so much and you pair this with either shell shock which is actually really strong with star power slowing them for like nearly five seconds clay pigeons is actually one of the best gadgets in the game not even memeing it's really strong you don't even need to combine it with shell shock you can just use it in the first interactions to then build up your super but because of how fast she is she's actually really hard to kill she's actually a really strong pick on pretty much every single game all right guys so now moving on to the AT events starting off with spike so spike is just a fairly consistent brawler in a lot of different game modes he's not actually drafted too much in power league right now but I actually think people underrate him a lot when it comes down to Brubble. He's just consistent against everything as long as you're not facing off against a thrower. When it comes down to Gem Grab as well, he can easily win his lane. His Mythic Gear is super strong as well. And you pair that with Vision on a bushy map. Spike is actually a really strong option. So next up in the A tier, we have Lou. So Lou is actually being drafted quite a fair bit less than the last meta. But I still think in the A tier, it's pretty fair because of how easy it is to shut down tanks with Lou. You can cycle so easily because of that epic gear and also it's just such a consistent option in a hot zone. You can literally pick Lou into everything and his super is just going to allow you to dominate. So Lou is still a fantastic option right now. So next up in the A tier we have Grom. So Grom is still is the best thrower inside of a game right now. Even though he keeps receiving all these nerfs, it's just so easy to use. His main attack is so easy to hit and then you've got his super as well which will just deal so much damage. Especially in bounty and knockout, he's really hard to contest against and still in other game modes as well as like a last pick 
pick. He can be so dangerous against those squishy brawlers. So next up in the A tier, we have Surge. Surge is still a really strong brawler in, in the game right now. And especially at the lower levels, he's just near enough impossible to face off against because of that gadget. This gadget is so broken right now. The fact that you can get so much shield protection and then it gives you two additional ammo when you get hit. It's just, it makes more sense to not even shoot Surge when he pops that gadget. So for me, he can just shut down enemy compositions completely on its own as a last pick. But if you draft Surge early on, this still is quite a few counters to him. So next up in the A tier, we have Russ. So even with the introduction of Unbreakable Walls, I still think he's a solid option right now. He's a really good option when you're thinking of some Bruble maps, when you're thinking of some gem grabs specifically like Hard Rock Mine, because of how the map's built, it still really suits him and it can still break open certain other walls as well is super of course is one of the best in the game giving you that additional damage and then still in some other scenarios as well you're going to get a lot of pressure with him you know maps like split as well so next up in the a tier we have poco so poco is slowly going down in the rankings because people are starting to learn how to counter him on specific maps but still he's a really solid option because of how easy it is to hit shots with him and just overall get a lot of pressure on the map you're talking hot zone he gets so much percentage by just existing because people really have to avoid feeding him the super so then he can cycle his screeching solo he's pretty consistent across the board in brubble and gem grabber as well but as i said people are slowly learning how to counter so next up in the a tier we have amber so the main reason why amber's in the a tier is literally because of her brand new mythic gear so if you didn't know she received a brand new mythic gear which when the opponent is on top of amber's super they will be slowed by 20 percent it's just a broken mechanic to begin with even if they nerfed this to like a five percent slow i just think mechanically it's just absolutely broken you think of certain maps where she can completely shut down uh, as a, an area with her super anyway it just makes it even more painful because you know with amber you could just throw your super down a lane and then you can just move away from that lane so then you don't set a light that oil and then the opponents have to just walk through that oil and get slowed every single time you know maps like could be canyon or safe zone spring to mind I just think that mythic gear is insanely broken fundamentally. So next up in the A tier, we have Stu. So whenever I'm thinking of a brother which can hard carry the best, it is Stu, especially if you have a really low ping. It's a fantastic option in pretty much every gem grab map right now. If you know how to play him right, you can pretty much win every single matchup. You also have Rubble where he's used consistently as well, even on the more longer range maps. And it just depends on your matchup really. Uh, but a good Stu player can pop off in a lot of different scenarios. So next up in the A tier, we have Grey. So Grey took a little while to really figure out where he was in the meta ever since they heavily nerfed his super. Before you can instantly teleport with your teammates and it was just so broken. But now he's starting to go back into the meta now. The main reason being is because his Walking King gadget, being able to shoot out for a wall and pull people through that wall and take them down quickly, it's really strong and it just has such long range. He's just a fantastic option. A lot of hot zone maps is super, you know, he's secretly an assassin. You can just take down brawlers so quickly. And with his unbreakable walls and specifically throwers becoming a lot more meta, he's a really great counter to those throwers. So that's why Gray is just so strong right now. Next up in the A tier, we have a Cole. So even though Cole fundamentally is really easy to pick specific counters, I still think he's such a powerful brawler. Again, if you're ever thinking of a brawler to hard carry with, Cole is that brawler because you can get such amazing flashy plays with his gadget, with his super, and he's just so consistent across the board right now. So whenever you're drafting, you have to consider that you might face a Cole. Next up in the A tier, we have Eve. So Eve is quietly making her way up into the top 10s nearly. But I think Eve is such a fantastic brawler right now. And even with the introduction of the Mythic gear, it's just making her even stronger. So she's got a Mythic gear, she's got the Reload gear as well, and it just makes her so much better she's really strong in bounty right now and she's actually a decent hybrid option because yes yeah, she's got that range there with long range brawlers but then she can actually get away from aggro brawlers pretty easily by either going on some water or using her gadget to get away there's also some other heist maps as well with a lot of water and pretty much knockout as well she's a really strong option she's just a really versatile pick right now next up in the a tier we have bonnie so could have pretty easily put her in the s tier because of how fantastic she is against pretty much everything the main reason why she's so so strong right now again is because she's that really good hybrid option against some of the throwers that are starting to dominate so you think of gray for example bonnie fulfills that role as well so she can deal with those long range snipe 
snipers and especially once you use the gadget you can deal with them pretty well and then of course once you get your super as well you can just counter the shop shooters even harder and then also some throwers as well and she's just so consistent across the board right now and finally moving on to the final a tier brawler we have gus so again another brawler that just misses out on the s tier but i think gus is just so solid across the board right now so whether that's bounty whether that's uh, as a gem carrier and gem grab or whether that's in knockout as well he's got secret slaying power you know pair that with the extra damage you get with your star power you combine this with his gadget kooky poppers and you can actually slay really well and the shield is actually secretly insane you know giving yourself or the teammate 4000 hp is so strong so for me gus is definitely one of the better brawlers in the game okay so now moving on to the s tier brawlers starting off with gene so gene is a fantastic brawler still when it comes down to bounty gem grab and knockout is one of the first options to pick every single time because it's just so solid against everything and he rarely has any counters in those game modes and of course his super can completely change your game in those game modes in general but yeah Jin just a super consistent brawler right now so next up in the s tier we have ash so ash is such a solid brawler when it comes down to the high level of competitive gameplay he's in a brawler which many people consider broken at the lower end but trust me if you're a really solid ash player you can win pretty much every single matchup Main reason being is because his rats really allow you to tank a lot of those other uh, counters, you know, for example, like B, Colette. When they typically counter you, if you get your rats, you can then change the matchup into your favor. So he's just really strong everywhere, really good in some bounty maps, Brubble and Gem Grab. He's so strong. And whenever you're playing Power League, you've really got to consider Ash as that sixth pick. So next up in the S tier, we have Crow. So still, Crow continues to be one of the best brothers in the game. He's just so good against everything, especially in game modes like gem grab and brood ball being able to scout the grass so easily with his main attack he then got his brand new mythic gear which is pretty strong and then of course he's still got the slowing toxin gadget which just allows you to gain control back so easily he's really good on some heist maps like kaboom canyon really good in hot zone especially to gain back pressure with that jump He's just a really consistent brawler right now. Next up in the S tier, we have Otis. So still, Otis is one of the best brawlers in the game right now. He has really good consistent range. He's got a really strong super. And he's just good in every single game mode. So it's always pretty safe to pick an Otis. So not only is he just fairly decent against most other matchups, he just fully hard counters those aggressive brawlers. And it's pretty rare to get a brawler like that in the meta right now. So Otis is always a safe pick. His mute just carries him. So next up in the S tier, we have Janet. So still, she's one of the best brawlers in the game. She literally has been in the top 10 ever since her release. And I get asked this question quite a fair bit by people who are at the lower end of the meta. Main reason why she's so good is because she's so consistent at outputting damage. She's got a really easy to charge up main attack, which is really easy to hit. It also uh, pierces through opponents. She's got a really annoying gadget. And of course, she's got her super to get her way. And if you're a really good Janet player, you can get some really easy consistent damage by duking a few shots and getting into position her wall peeking capabilities are so strong as well so she's such a fantastic brawler right now so next up in the s tier we have penny so no surprises here she's one of the best brawlers in the game she's just consistent across the board she's got really good damage pretty decent range a really strong gadget which can help her tank even some sharpshooters like b for example or just to melt any aggro brawlers up close she's got a really annoying super as well which you can just put behind unbreakable walls or just in a really backwards position and then she's got a brand new pet gear as well that just allows her to get even more damage with her cannon so for me she's still one of the best brawlers in the game so next up in the s tier we have max so no surprises here she's still one of the best brawlers in the game in emea and also east asia she was the most banned brawler in competitive so it just goes to show that pros really value max and it comes down to competitive the main reason being is because max can just completely change the game with her super and she's just solid against everything a good max player that has the wiggles can juke pretty much every single shot so for me max has to be one of the best brawlers so next up in the s tier we have b so b still continues to be one of the best brawlers inside of the game right now if i had to pick any brawler to nerf because of ladder it would have to be b because she's just used everywhere in brawl she can literally 1v3 as they made it pretty much everywhere she's so annoying she can she's got one of the longest ranges in the game she's got a super that just slows you into oblivion and then she can just auto aim you keep cycling between her uh, 3k shots and the fact that if you get the damage gear available as well you can deal nearly 4k damage with it it's just insane and still continues to be one of the best brawlers in the game so now moving on to the second best brawler in the game right now we have rt so ever since rt has been released he's been so strong he even got a few nerfs and i still think he's one of the best brawlers in the game right now so he's the perfect power league brawler main reason being is because he has so much hp for a sniper 
but as a uh, brawler that's a hybrid he can counter other sharpshooters at long range because of his gadget typically you know brawler like b or piper he can two tap them and then gadget them and then they're literally dead they have no way to actually counter that which is just insane and then of course you've got his split form which has received a, a really hard nerf to be honest but still those aggro brawlers assassins can't really go close to him because in your split form you'll literally delete them instantly you can deal like 9k damage within a second it's absolutely insane so for me rt has to be one of the best brawlers right now all right guys to so jumping into the best brawler in the game right now hands down it has to be meg so meg is completely dominating the game right now whether you play showdown whether you play any single game mode you just see meg she runs absolutely riot the main reason why she's so strong is because she's actually just so hard to take down her mech of course it's pretty good now that you can actually regen health with it but i don't think that's the main problem the main problem for me has to be even when you get her down into her smaller form it's the fact that she has her shield all of the time it's got such a big damage reduction and it lasts for 30 seconds it's just so hard to kill meg right now it feels like she's just cycling super over and over again and for me she has to be the best brawler in the game because she's always banned in competitive if she's not banned she's played and more often than not you have to revolve your draft around whether she's actually been drafted or not, or not if that makes sense so for me she has to be the most powerful brawler in the game all right guys it's gonna be it for today's video let me know what you think of the tier list in the comment section below of course you know it's literally dependent on someone's opinion i try and put as many stats into this as possible you know watching a lot of competitive gameplay watching scrims playing power league playing ladder there's a lot of things that contribute to this list for me i think it's pretty bulletproof there may be a few uh, things you could change but you know the better actually hasn't changed too much and there's a few brawlers like uh megan shelly that have gone up but for me pretty much everything has kind of stayed the same you know the top brawlers have been the top brawlers for a long time so yeah not much changed in that respect but that's gonna be it for today's video guys hope you enjoyed this one don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time